This is Umar for Box Nation. Last time I spoke to Fabio Wardley was during the uh, fight week and I said I'm joined by the hottest free agent in British boxing. Now I'm joined by the most popular man in British boxing. What on earth is going on, Fabio? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. New heights, new heights. Um, yeah, just um, it's all going off. It's all going off. Look, it's funny. It's, it's funny to show how not even a win can do you so much credit Gain you so much respect in boxing, gain you so much admiration. Um, so yeah, it's a fantastic fight, and a lot has come from it. Well, yeah, it is all going off because the Sky viewing figures were nearly off the charts, and one of the highest viewing figures they've had for a, a main event, a non pay per view fight. That is incredible for yourself and Fraser Clark. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's a wild number. When we first put together this the show and me headlining and stuff. I was nervous, to be honest, because I didn't want it to be shit, obviously. I didn't, I didn't, it's my first headline. I didn't want like a, a couple thousand people in the stadium and barely anyone tune in and all of that. So, yeah, I'm overwhelmed. I'm, I'm, I'm buzzing with the way it's turned out, with the way, um, with the way the show went top to bottom. There were some great fights and a lot happened in those and obviously my fight and then the, the viewing figures as a whole, I think they reach 1.7 million. So that's that's an absolute ridiculous number. Um, so I'm very proud of that. Yeah, it is. And um, as I said to many people uh, since the fight, going into it, yourself and Fraser, yeah, you're heavyweights and that draws in casuals. But, you know, you weren't massive names in the heavyweight division. You know, like if you went to the man on the street um, and asked them who Fabio Waldy, Fraser Clark is, you might know them, but it wasn't like, your Antonys and Tysons and even your Joe Joyce is, is is a really popular fighter but now. But now, yourself and Fraser Clark being heavyweights, having that magnificent fight, you go around um, anywhere since the fight and that's all people are talking about. So you've become big stars out of this fight, yourself and Fraser. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. Uh, it's a funny one, isn't it? Because... I don't know, it's not necessarily what you expect or what you or even really want from it. You want to have a good fight, you want to have a good crack. You want to be respected by the boxing community, but obviously there's their more casual fans, the wider audience and stuff that take an interest in, and they're invested in us as well now. Fraser Clark, who's been very complimentary of yourself, you've been very complimentary of him since the fight. Um, I'm not trying to instigate anything here. I just want to get your reaction to comment, which he's entitled to make. He said it on Talks, but he said that you were happier with the draw. Uh, what's your response and thoughts on that? <laughs> well, yeah, to a certain extent, I think he might be right because obviously I, I still retained my belts. I'm still undefeated. I'm still the champion, um, and I'm still entirely in the driving seat. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm. I would have been happier with a draw than he would. Don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean I'm satisfied with it at all. It doesn't mean what I wanted. Um, I'm definitely not overjoyed that it's, a joy, that it's a draw and I'm bouncing around and I was in my change rooms flying around and celebrating. I even said to my team, like when they wanted to, after the fight, people wanted to take pictures and things like that. And I said, no, go away. We don't celebrate draws. We don't celebrate draws or nothing. So that's why you only see... You see the pictures of with me holding the belts and obviously dealing that, but my whole collective team wanted to get involved and I said, look, no, it's not this is not something we're gonna celebrate. I understand we've come away with the belts and stuff, but ultimately it's not a win. Well, it's, it's a good attitude and, and mindset to have that. And Fraser's the same. I heard him on Talksbook saying he's back in the gym, um, trying to correct a few things in opinion that went wrong for him. In terms of yourself, obviously you, you, your nose is not in a very good state. We saw that on fight night. So um, are you looking to to get back on the gym? Obviously you're not going to be sparring, et cetera, but just even a bit shadow boxing, just keeping yourself fit. Is that something in your mind or are you having a break, Fabio? No, I've got a little break going on. I've got a little break going on. Um, I've got a holiday next week. I think even Fraser himself's on a, on a holiday. So he's, he's treating himself yeah. as well. Yeah. So maybe he maybe had a little round or two in the gym and then, could say that out for the cameras, but then we, I think he's off sunning it off somewhere as well. So I'll be doing the same. Okay. Okay. Well, you definitely deserve it because I couldn't believe actually, and a lot of people ringside couldn't believe what we were watching in terms of both of you, your bravery and your, your willingness to go to that next level. But especially you, I could see you like sort of 
looking to the ground and having to pick yourself up. And then you were just sort of winging in these mad shots, these right hands, uh, sort of Deontay Wilder style. Um, mm. you, just weren't, you just weren't going to give up that night. Nothing was going to get to you, Fabio. It was incredible to watch. No, 1,000%. Nothing was going to take those belts away from me. I had to go out flat on my back. Um, and even that, I was refusing to do. I was refusing to go down, refusing to take a knee, refusing to take any sort of second. If I got pushed back, I was walking straight forward. I was getting stuck in. So the game plan was just to keep the pressure on and stay in front of him. Um, and although that my the cut on my nose may have given him an extra bit of edge and a bit of extra bit of motivation thinking he's getting somewhere for me the point was to prove that it means nothing it's just a little bit of blood I'm I'm still fully there in me behind me I've still got all my attributes and all my aspects behind me okay were you surprised with his durability his chin I'm not talking about his heart or his winningness but his his actual durability, were you surprised that he lasted the distance with you? Yeah, no, I genuinely was. I genuinely was. Um, we've seen him have gas tank problems in the past, and I thought that would play quite a large factor in that. And don't get me wrong, after the fight, he fucking he fell onto his stool and he was falling around the ring and almost fell out when he had to try and go to the doctor and stuff. So, look, he absolutely exhausted himself. Um and I was quite, I was quite surprised by his gas tank as well. I thought he'd drop off a bit more than he did, so he didn't. Um, so credit to him for that, really. Okay. Um, there have been reports that talks are going on for a rematch in September. Has there been any talks? Is that just nonsense? No, none whatsoever. Okay. Not, not. I've, I've definitely not spoke to anyone. I've not had a chat with anyone. Anyone that's. Anyone on my team that's mentioned it, I've said, look, we'll talk about it in a few weeks. Not right now. Um, now is now is downtime. Now is me time, family time, chill out. We can we can have those conversations in a week or so. They're not going nowhere. So anything you see, I saw something to say about September or some shit. Like I've I've not I've not had a I've I've not spoken to anyone about doing anything in September. So uh no, the bullshit. Okay. Um, have you watched it back? How many times have you watched it back? I haven't, actually. Really? I haven't watched it back at all. I laid in bed last night and watched some highlights, and that was about it. I haven't watched it back in full yet. Um, I honestly just haven't had the time. I've just been doing bits and bobs and catching up and seeing family and stuff. So I'll take some time when I'm ready to have a look at it, run through it and stuff, but we'll see. Well, listen... Uh... Congratulations. I know you don't want to celebrate, um, but it was a it was a great event and great fight, as you would have seen um from the feedback. And uh I was just tired watching it ringside. So God knows how you and, and Fraser felt uh in the ring. Just a couple of things I want to touch upon, Fabio, before we close off. Um what would you say is the the difference in gap between yourself and Fraser and the bracket in terms of your Daniel Dubois, your Joe Joyce's? Ajit Kabayels, do you think you and Fraze proved that you're at that level now or is there still a gap in your opinion? No, I think we've proved that we're at that level. We are. Um, you've seen Daniel go go into tough fights, go down, be beat, lose, get back up, show that resilience. We've, we've done the same thing. Um, I think that's a large part and obviously going 12 rounds as well, a good hard 12 rounds as well, powering through them. I think all those boxes are ticked to prove that you're in that next echelon. There's certain things you need to do along the way to say, hey, I can I can mix it with them top boys. Um, Skill-wise, me and Fraser have both got it in the bank. It just seemed like on that night, more, more so me, but we didn't really decide to use them too much. We decided to just get stuck into a scrap. So we've got the skills. We've got the heart. That much is there. That much is obvious to see. So we're in the mix with them boys as well. Okay. Do you think it's time to get a promoter or not? <laughs> um, maybe, 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 maybe. I, I don't know. I'm like the thing is with me. I'm not actually. I'm not anti promoter. That's not my thing. I'm not against them. I love them all. I loved working with Ed. He was fantastic. I love working with Frank. He was such a gentleman. Um, and I really enjoyed working with Boxer as well, and and, and Ben Shalom and the team. They're all great. They're all cool. I don't mind um, working with any of them. 
my priority number one and always has been is has is to be in control of my own career. That's all. That's all I want. So if we can, if I can speak to them and sit down and we can come to some sort of negotiation where I'm in primary control and like with me as my character, I don't like being told what to do. I want to do what I want to do, especially when it's me and it's my life on the line. So um, I'm always open to having a chat with those guys and and putting together maybe a longer term deal or, or something like that. I'm never against it. Um, the door's always open. I think that's why I've always managed to work this so well is because I've always been so plain and honest with people. Mm. I've never I've never sold anyone any dreams or lied to anyone. Like I'm still cool with Ed. We still get on well. Um, we've still spoken about having other fights in the future and in the past and things like that. Same with Frank. We've spoken to him previously about Saudi and stuff before this fight and things. So I'm cool with everyone. Everyone's good. Everyone understands my stance and I understand theirs. So as long as we can meet some mutual ground, then I'd be happy to do some sort of multi deal. But ultimately, at the moment, I'm I'm backing myself, and it's showing as well because I don't. If I was signed for a promoter, would I would I have been able to have the last two, three massive events that I've had? Mm. Who knows? Okay, I just asked that because at, at, at this point, until the David Adelaide fight, yeah, you flew with flying flying colours, really. Now you've had a draw, just say um, it went to Fraser by a round. If you do have a loss and you haven't got a promoter there, that puts you in a, in a little bit more of a difficult situation. So as you go up the levels now, I'm just thinking if the offer's right for a multi-fight deal, then possibly Fabio's going to entertain that. Yeah, yeah, of course. I'd always entertain it. But also, my th look, I, I accept that my strategy is high risk, high reward. Mm -hmm. I win, great. I'm on top of the tree. I get more money. I get more rights. I get bigger shows. I lose. Cool. I've got to work my way back and figure it out. I'm not against either. I understand. I understand the game. I, it's something I made my peace with a long time ago. Um, but I also don't believe that, ah, oh, a loss. And then what? Everyone's just going to cast me aside and never want to never wanna work for me. That's not going to be the case, is it? Because one, I'm entertaining I can talk a bit. I've got a bit of mouth. I can I can get people going. I can G it up. I've got a big fan base. I've got people behind me. So regardless of a loss, even if I'm a free agent, someone's still going to want to have a chat with me. All I will say is, though, after that fight, your price for a multi-fight deal has definitely gone up. No, I was going to say. I was going to say. Like I say, high risk, high reward. And going for a war like that has only pushed the price up further. Well, listen, Fabio, I appreciate your time only a few days after what was a, an amazing event at the O2. And, and congratulations to yourself, both and Fraze, because that is what British boxing is all about. And uh, yeah, boxing's back on a high in this country, really, because of, you know, recent times, because of yourself and Fraze. And hopefully that momentum carries on. Um, so, Fabio, appreciate your time. Heal up and uh, we'll speak soon in a few weeks, I'm sure, about the future. Cheers, bro. Appreciate Thanks, it. Catch you in a bit.